Welcome to the final week. If you've missed the first three weeks of this incredible series, you can go back to our YouTube channel. We call it Hope on Demand. Check out all the archive messages. How many of y'all enjoyed the Lescos last week? And it was so, so good. And then we had the Hagans the week before and the Claders the week before. And we're already planning next year's relationship series with some guests. We're really excited about it. But this week, this week is us. You get us. You get us this week. I'm excited. One of the things that we love about this relationship series is, of course, that first off, we are all in some form of relationship, right? Give yes. us a big wave if you are. are in yep. some kind of relationship. All right, that's okay. All right. Spouses. We're catching on. Some of us are catching on. Who is involved in a family? Who's part of a family? Yeah, spouses, parents, all right. siblings, Who has a friends, sibling? coworkers. Okay, all right. Who has a coworker? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we are all involved in some form of relationship. relationship. Yeah. So this entire series is really about helping us to recognize that we play a role in the relationship. We do. And that role is not the part to always be saying, you're the issue. You're the reason why we're having difficulty. You're the reason we can't get along. But to just sit back and say, God, actually... Maybe it's me. Maybe you're not the issue. Right. Maybe I need to work on me for a minute. And the truth is, we, we've unpacked it throughout this series, and we'll do it even more today. For us to really love others well, we have to wholeheartedly listen and run the play that the Bible instructs us to. And this is Jesus' words in John 13, verse 34. It's on the screen. It says this, a new command I give to you. Now, the thing about a new command, it doesn't say a new suggestion. How many of y'all would say, this is a little bit of a challenging verse, especially in a political tension season. This is a challenging verse, especially when you don't see eye to eye on something. This is a challenging verse. Uh, it's not a suggestion. It's not a like, a, hey, you might want to. No, it's a directive, a new command. This is Jesus' words. I give you, love one another as I have loved you, yeah. so you must love one another. How many of y'all would say, I'm a work in progress. Come on, I'm working on this. And that's okay. But this is the point of the relationship series. We're in relationships with someone in different seasons of life, but this is a directive that God has given us. It is. In each of the weeks previous to this one, we have introduced you to or maybe brought out couples that you have, mm -hmm. that we've had out here before, and you got a little glimpse, a little glimpse of their journey, a little glimpse of what the Lord has taught them. And sometimes um, in those glimpses, the goal is that you go, wow, that's really helpful. Yeah. But sometimes it leaves you like, oh, tell me more. Right? Like, I, I need to hear a little bit more. Sure. It wasn't enough. You just kind of opened up this little Pandora's box of like, what am I supposed to do? How yeah. am I supposed to trust the Lord? But it's just a few moments here. And it is always intended for you to take it back to God yes. and incur, ask God for the encouragement to keep going. But this week, we are here to tie an amazing little bow on it. I won't say a pretty little bow because he doesn't, he doesn't really want me to reference a pretty little bow if he's included. That makes sense. He doesn't like it if I say anything about a pretty bow pertaining to him. <laughs> We're going to keep Woo. trying. All right, let me, let me make it a little lighthearted. Let me make it a little lighterhearted. <laughs> um, every one of our guests gave us a little bit of a glimpse of their beginning. Yeah. And... Uh, Y'all, we're in this for the long haul. Like, if you stick around Hope City for many, many years, you're going to hear our story as we unpack it. We also even have some exciting things planned when our new building opens uh, to do a relationship conference. Let's go, somebody. There's so many different things we're going to be able to do. All right, so our journey started. This girl right here is absolutely brilliant. I married way out of my league. Everybody knows I married way out of my league when it comes to looks. They're like... How did that happen? Because whenever I've traveled, some of y'all have heard me tell this story, but whenever I've traveled and ever I throw up the picture, people are like, no way, like she's Photoshopped. <laughs> There's no way. So we were early, early days of, of uh, being married. And uh, we went to a mall in Oklahoma and uh, the mall security guard was following us around. And some of y'all have heard this story before, but he was following us around like, like awkwardly, like hiding behind the tree stuff. And I'm like, okay, this guy is fully profiling me. And so they come around the corner and when I step away, he walks directly over to Jackie and says, excuse me, ma'am, is that guy bothering you? She was like, who? 
He's like, that guy. And she was like, that's my husband. You could tell he was like, I've been trained for this. Blink twice if you're in trouble. Like, <laughs> married way out of my league. And she's brilliant, brilliant. Like IQ, EQ, how to read a room. She's absolutely amazing. Master's degree in counseling. Like I've shared all of this. So she was pre-med leaving Southern Illinois to go to a university in Oklahoma. Uh, her family's roots are here in Houston and family roots in o Illinois. So she shows up first weekend in Illinois and some random people that were there, you pull up in and they were like, hey, we're all going to a night of worship tonight. And you were like, I'm, let's go, I wanna go. So she shows up to a worship night. By the way, if you've never been a part of one of our worship nights before, uh, this story might help you because you never know who's in the room. You just never know. So. Exactly at the same time, well, earlier in the week, a couple of my buddies were like, hey, there's a worship night coming up this Friday night we should go to. Well, what she didn't know, what I didn't know was we were going to be at the same worship night. By the way, you never know who's going to be in the room. <laughs> say, it, say it again. At the worship night. It's the last Sunday night of every month. Your 25, 30, 40 year marriage relationship could be in the room. So make sure you uh, don't stay sitting on that couch playing video games. Maybe you should show up to the house of God. Oh, he's done. He's done. I wasn't done. I wasn't done. Wait, I'm jumping in then. First off, we compliment one another so well. Nobody got robbed here in this relationship. So I have to add that. Listen, the room's like, ah. Uh, no. kind of did. You did a little bit. You did a little bit. Nobody got robbed. We are both so much better by, because of the grace of God. So we went to this worship night. We met one another. Well, actually, we didn't. No, hold on. So we're at the worship night. night. Uh, the pastor says... So she, I'll let him tell the story. She's pre-med. She's amazing. Uh, I actually had an opportunity uh, to try out to go play overseas basketball. And so uh, this is my journey. Her journey's pre-med. Who laughed? <laughs> Cross you over. Maybe they Left were laughing right. at pre-med, honey. You just never know. I didn't say I was pre-med. I said <laughs> hot sauce. That's why you're wearing your Rockets jacket today. Oh, okay. Yes. Sit down. And the shoes go with it. Amen. Okay, stop it, guys. Quit it. Of course they do. Quiet. So I'm going to do this, but I'm at the worship night, and the pastor says, hey, there's somebody here, and you have been blazing your own trail, and there's nothing wrong with ambition until it gets unhealthy, and you have been pursuing something that was not God's plan. It's been your plan. Drake hadn't dropped that God's plan song yet. It was literally A little my, bit before that. my plan, not God's plan. And so I go down to the altar for direction. Well, there's 2,000 plus people in this night of worship, and I'm the only one that goes down. I'm like, did I misunderstand him? <laughs> like, did he say what I thought he said? And so later on, fast forward, we're at this restaurant called Cheddar's. How many of y'all like Cheddar's? Come on, little. Cheddar's, Cheddar's will always hold a special place in our hearts, even if they they do it dirty like lubies and get rid of it. Broke my heart. Broke my, did it break sad. anybody else's heart when There's they just got rid left. of lubies like it doesn't matter anymore? Who likes lubies? There's one lubies left. I still do. I, still, I don't, didn't say I ate there, but I still like it. I still have fond memories. So anyways, if Cheddar's Ranch is wrong, I don't want to be right. And we're there and we're all hanging out and we're leaving and there's this group of girls at this table. And my friend Robin, who thought he was smooth, was like, come on, I think I know those girls. Okay. <laughs> Voice got all warm. And so we go over. And uh, there's these girls at the table. And uh, we start talking to them. And this one girl goes, hey, weren't you at the worship night tonight? You went down for addiction? I'm like, direction. <laughs> I went down for direction for my life. And she's like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm glad you got delivered. I'm like, I don't understand. So all these, all these girls are there. And there was one girl that caught my eye at that table. This girl who rolled in from Southern Illinois, pre-med, sitting at that table. She was not impressed by me because she did not have time for silly boys because she was so much smarter. So fast forward years later, I swept her off her feet or knocked her down and said, you're going to like me. And uh, we've been married now for 20 years. That is... That's it. That's all of the story. I mean, there's so many details in between. in between. That's... That was all of it. It was just all those wonderful details. It was a good glimpse. It was a good glimpse. It was a, um, so we met in college. So we that's did, what yeah. you grabbed. And we, had, we were best friends beyond that. So the amazing thing about oh. the different couples that we bring up here, their stories are also different, right? Some of them are like, it was wonderful for the whole time. And it truly was for them. Mm -hmm. And for others of them, it's been rocky and rough. 
And for others of them, they met a little bit later on in life. And some of them met really young. Our story is we met when we were uh, 19, 18 and 19. 18 and 19. 18 and 19 years old, and we developed a friendship for the next four years. He was literally my last call of the day for the next four years of college, and we became best friends. So when you see the two of us being silly up here, and if you see us around um, around the campus, we, we are, we're best buddies. Like, he's best my buddy. I, so sent her a, I sent her a reel the other day. A, a major university did a study that said, <laughs> and this is going to help some single folks for future relationships, it said, uh, if you're a significant other and you have a lot of witty banner and you make fun of each other, there's longevity in it. So I texted her. I said, girl, we're good. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. Because one of the greatest um, fundamentals that we continually teach and preach in relationships, yep. just relationships across the board, is a strong foundation of friendship. Yes. Have you been a good friend? Are you a good friend? Our journey was up and down in our early, in our college years, because really, honestly, we hadn't quite learned to be good friends yeah. yet. Yep. And it really brings us to this place of what Jesus commanded when he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. So whether you are in a marriage relationship or a family dynamic. Yep. Jesus is telling us that we are to love people the way that he loves us. How many of you are like, that's a big, that's a big ask, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are asking me to do something that is close to impossible. And it took us a lot of years of friendship. And I, we're still, we still work on it every day. Figuring yep. out how to love one another well is is so important in our lives. And in week number one, the yep. Claters, they mentioned this really important, the most important thing that you, hopefully you can take out of the whole relationship series. They talked about being a God first person. Yes. Because in order to have great, what we call horizontal relationships, yeah, yeah, yeah. these relationships, friendships, great relationships with your family, great relationships with your coworkers, in order to have those great horizontal relationships, they come directly out of having a great vertical relationship with God. And when we get that out of order, that is when we find that our relationships struggle desperately. Because we don't have great relationships, and then we just give God a little bit of what's left over. Take a picture of that if you have your phone. It's on the screen. Healthy horizontal relationships come out of a healthy vertical relationship. Yeah. We say that to our kids a lot. Like, hey, hey, you're getting frustrated. Here, keep it vertical. Uh, because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers of darkness. There's spiritual frustrations. There's things that people are dealing with. In order for me to be the husband I need to be, I have to be a good son first to God. In order for me to be the dad I'm supposed to be, I have to keep a vertical. In order for me to be the pastor, the, the leader, what God has called me, the assignment connected to our purpose, it has to come from here first in order for it to yeah. come here. The Bible says this in Proverbs 3, verse 6. It says this, in everything you do, oof, this is another challenging verse, put God first. And what does it say? He would direct you and finish this. And crown your efforts with success. Nope. I love this version of, of this scripture. It says he will direct you when you put God first. Put God first. So not only is he going to show you what to do, how to do it, but he will crown your efforts with success, meaning everything that you invest into other relationships after you have first made your investment in your relationship with God, he will place success on those things. So he will place anointing on those things. He will place wisdom upon your life to know how to navigate the difficult things. Because how many of you can be honest in this place and at our other campuses and acknowledge knowledge, there are some difficult moments in relationships. Anybody ever experienced sure. this? Yeah. There are difficult moments to navigate, but when we put God first, then he will give us success in those relationships that come next. And the truth is, if you've ever found yourself in a spot, you know, there's so many self-help books, not that there's anything wrong with them, but a lot of times we depend on self-help books more than we depend on the Bible. And if you want to be the best spouse you're called to be, put God first. Yeah. This is so fundamental. Like, it's shocking. We're like, this is the big takeaway? Yeah, put God first. 
Fully seek first the kingdom and put him first. You want to be the best mighty man of valor, man of God? Put God first. You want to be the best Proverbs 31 woman, woman of God? Put God first. You want to be the mom that God's called you to be now or in the future? Put God first. You want to be the father, the brother, the friend, the mentor that God's called you to be? It's fundamental. Put God first. If you're a seasoned saint or maybe you're brand new to the faith, there's a verse in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, and some of you can finish it. Some of you are like, I have that tattooed on my ankle and your other ankle has a porky pig tattoo. Um, this was, I don't know what that was, but do you? Okay. Proverbs four, verse 23 says this above all else. Yeah. Above all else. I'm going to say it slower. Guard your heart. For every thing you do, watch this, flows from it. Oh, we see this verse and you're like, praise God. Above all else. (laughs) Above all else, guard your heart. So I'm going to do a practical illustration to help somebody. Uh, My friend, Pastor Travis Hearn, I saw him do this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to steal it. I like it. Uh, Everybody, if you have a phone, would you pull your phone out real quick? Any, Any kind of phone, even if it's your burner phone, pull it out. Amen. I hope you don't have one. I don't know your life. Amen. We're trying to help you. Yeah. Okay. Everybody gets thrown out. Come on. Wave it in the air like you just don't care. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Uh, Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to just give your phone to a random stranger. Just hand your phone to someone you don't know. Look at the willingness in the room. Yeah. Uh, But watch this. There's another layer to this. Now give him your pen. Now give him your pen. Let him just navigate around in there a little bit. You don't have to do that. Get your phone back. Come on, get your phone back quick. Before, before they're like, Pastor told me, don't do that. Get your phone it's back. A point. Like it's four, 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 one. No, but watch this. We're so protective of this. Some of y'all are like, I'm not doing that. That's crazy. Yeah. But you end up in a relationship that you shouldn't be in. Right. Oh, I'm not doing that. But you end up being intrigued by something that you know is not connected to your assignment. Right. Oh, I'm not doing that. Yet you drive over because what you put in your eyes and your ears today will reflect in your heart tomorrow. Wow. Some of y'all know more about the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef and more lyrics by Taylor Swift and Drake and The Weeknd and come on, come on, somebody and Travis Scott that you did. Ski, some of y'all. So, some, of, some of y'all don't even know what that means. And some of y'all are like, that's my jam. <laughs> Put that verse back up. Above all else. Above all else. Now listen, Christianity is not about behavior modification. We preach this. But it is about heart transformation. And there's some things that you have to lay down. There's some things you have to abandon. Right. There's some things you have to surrender. In order for you to become who God has called you to be, these are things that you have to do to guard your heart yeah. above all else. Did everybody get their phones back? Come on, I just want to double check. Make sure you still have your phone. But the important thing about this that's so important to think about is that if we're talking about loving other people well, I don't know if, if you're able to step back and really see it, but so often when we don't guard our hearts from mm-hmm. what's going on in life, we are easily moved, annoyed, aggravated, frustrated, yeah. hurt, broken, defeated, discouraged. Yep. Because of everything else that we allowed in our heart, everything that we allowed to have access, everything that we allowed to have pull on our day, on our situation. And what happens is we are not able to truly love others the way that God wanted us to love them. Because in this next moment, I'm going to treat you the way that I was just treated 10 minutes ago. And because they hurt me, now I'm frustrated and I'm annoyed. And I'm not able to love you well because now I'm moody because somebody else kicked me off 25 minutes ago. And I haven't been able to bounce from it because we don't guard our hearts well as humans. It keeps us from loving others the way that Jesus did. And I said this week one, and then what ends up happening is you bleed on people that didn't cut you, which is why it's so important to heal in those moments. Take it to the Lord and say, God, open-handed, I didn't guard my heart. Lord, I opened my heart up, and I got hurt, 
or this situation messed me up or messed me over. And so I want to redirect and realign my heart to your heart because I'm seeing that everything I do say and live like flows out of this place. Yeah. Let's give them some practical. Well, and I want to say this too very quickly. Some of you might say, well, I'm married. How do I guard my heart? Well, you guard your heart with all the things that are impacting your heart. You take those to Jesus first. Yep. You do not expect your spouse or your partner or even your best friends in life. You don't expect other people to resolve the issues in your heart. Good. You take those to Jesus alone. God alone will repair, fix, restore, deliver, heal, redeem all the things in your heart. It's never been the role of another human. It's never Ooh. been the role of someone that really does truly love you That's well, good. but isn't armed with all divinity. That's God. It is God only. So good. So in order to love others well, we must guard our hearts. Do you know what we teach our, our kiddos, especially our teenagers? I was just talking with my 14-year-old daughter about this the other day. I talked to her about all the things in her life that she can't see, all the things in her heart that God placed within her that yeah. she doesn't even know are there. Yeah. So I said, but Finley, you know what you need to do? You have to guard your heart, babe. And you know what that means for you at your age? What that means is you start recognizing right now how you deserve to be treated, how you deserve to be talked to, how you deserve to be dismissed or not dismissed, how you deserve to be valued, how you deserve to feel as if you are going to grow into a great woman of God. And today you are taking care of the things that God is developing within you. How many of you need to know today that it's your job to take care of what God is developing within you? Oh, that's because good. He placed great things really there. Good. He placed great things yes. within you, but it's your job, not the person you're in relationship with. It's your job to say, nope, God said that there's more in there mm -hmm. than what you are capable of seeing. So I'm going to guard my heart a little bit. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to protect what God invested. But there are some, some habits that we have to first put in place yes. in our life to be God-first people, to really guard that vertical relationship. And I think sometimes we say, oh, oh, we already know these things. But I wonder how much of the time we truly put them into practice. And the first one is this, and again, it's super practical. The first one is this, start your day with prayer. So simple. So simple. Start your day with prayer. Wake up in the morning. And it doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be awkward. It's a conversation. Like, Sky Daddy. Not that. Preferably not that, but it's okay. We won't judge, will we? There's no judgment. No, it's not, but don't do that. But, but Heavenly Father, today, I thank you for this day. This is the day that you've made. In Lamentations chapter 3, your mercies are brand new today. Yeah. Your goodness is still chasing me today. So God, give me the clarity, the direction Give me peace in areas that feel like it's heavy. God, I thank you today that I can trust you even when I can't fully track you. That we start our day, the moment your feet hit the floor, I do it every morning. Every morning I, I sit on the edge of my bed and I open my hands like this and I say, God, I thank you that today I'm more mindful of your agenda than mine. We start our day off with prayer. Right. That means we don't start our day off by hopping on our phone and seeing what somebody posted overnight. Yikes. That means we don't hop on our phone immediately and call the people that we care about or the people that we love. That means we don't turn on the TV right away. That means we don't turn on the news to hear what's going on. That means the very first thing we do in the morning is we say, good morning, Jesus. Let me say something that's crazy. Morning, I read this stat the other day that said that uh, our, our human condition now we consume the first 30 minutes of the day that we consume, whether it's news, social media, and the last 30 minutes of the day, just that one hour, that 30 in the start, 30 at the end, is more information than our grandparents consumed in a month. Because everything is so accessible and so fast. So we start our day off in prayer. Number two. Second thing, again, another simple, just read a simple morning devotional. And if you can, if you can muster it up, do it at night as well. So you start your day in prayer with a simple little devotional and a simple little devotional at the end of the day. Why? Because you're able to guard your heart and your mind that way. 
When you start your day off focused on the things of God, focused on what the word says yep, about yep. you, ending with what the word says about you, then whatever is to come, you've already framed your life with faith cool. so that whenever you face, whatever you're going to face, you're able to say, God, I trust you with it. I'm going to give it to you, God. And as you end your day in the same exact way, you are not ending your day with expecting someone else to fix the day. You're ending the day trusting God to lift off whatever it was that was frustrating, give you peace as you head to sleep. So good. Keeps your heart and your mind in alignment with his heart. And then number three is memorize scripture. Now, because again, what fills spills. And some of you are like, that's super overwhelming. Just just do one verse. Uh, Our first pastor uh, talked to us about memorizing scripture. The whole staff was doing this. And we took index cards and took a Sharpie And he said, I don't want you to print it. I want you to write it because you'll read your handwriting. So I want you to write it. And I just want you to learn one verse a week. Well, I'm like, I love being challenged. So I was like, I'm not going to do one. I'm going to do three. And then I went from one to three. And then I went from three to five. So if you notice sometimes when we're preaching, verses just come out. Because again, what fills spills. And so it's really great to have a verse that you've been meditating on, that you've memorized, that's in your heart, so that when you're praying for someone, or you're encouraging someone, or you encounter someone that you're supposed to love, and then you're talking to them, you're like, you know what? I wanted to remind you, I read this in my devotional, and this is what the Bible says, and then you just are able to speak it over them. So number three, we need to memorize scripture. Even that scripture that we just talked about, Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it the issues of life spring forth. They flow out of it. When you have that scripture memorized, no matter what translation you memorize, when you find yourself in a moment where you're like, ooh, I should should guard myself from that, you will instantly hear that scripture above all else. Yep. Of all else. And if you don't have it memorized in your heart, then you don't have the word of God to fall back on. You'll find an opinion to fall back on. But if the word is inside of you, it mm. will be the thing that comes up out of you when you need it the most. Good, it's good. So as simple as it seems and as um, like schooly as it seems, like I've got to do work. You know, sometimes discipline, having the spiritual discipline to know what God says about us in, in his that word, word, what he asks of us in his word, that requires discipline, which so means good. you may have to put in a little bit of effort, yep. but I promise you that effort will pay off huge when you are in need of knowing what the word of God says. Amen? That's good. Amen. Amen. Got to get that word, 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 word. Okay. That was okay. so cheesy. All I'm right. Number four. Again. Number four, you have to worship every single day. Every day. You don't wait to be in the best worship around on a Sunday morning. Let me say this, okay. Not everybody is anointed uh, and and called to be on the stage like these Hope City Worship crew. Give it up for Hope City Worship. They're amazing. But every single one of God's children are called to be worshipers. We were created to worship. Even if you're the best shower singer from Katy, even if you're the best shower singer in the Heights, wherever you're from, God loves your worship. And you can just lift your hands and say, God, I thank you today. I give you praise. And praise is, is more than just an action. It's an attitude that says, no matter what season I'm in, I will remain grateful because you've been better than good to me. Yeah. So I will worship you anyways. I will praise you anyways. I love when Michael was singing earlier during the offering moment. I leaned over to PJ and I said, ah, oh, I love what Michael sings. It's such a purity. Y'all, do y'all remember that moment? Yeah. It just is from such a child-like expectancy of faith. He loves your worship, but you have to be intentional. You want to be good in relationships? Keep it vertical yeah. and make worship your priority. And then number five. Number five, we technically already said it, but it is take your struggles to God instead of people. Yay. When we encounter difficulties, what's the first thing we do? It should be pray. Y'all, y'all were taught you were lost there in the midst of what you should say. Our first response should be to take it to the Lord. But so often when we encounter struggles and difficulties, we call up the person that we feel like has a great amount of wisdom or we reach out to somebody. Rarely do we just sit down right where we are, right in that difficult space and say, okay, God, I don't know what to do. I need your wisdom in this. So take your struggles to God instead of people. God can handle your struggles. God can handle your frustrations. 
Yeah. God can handle your humanity because he knows you. He created you. Pastor Karen said it in week two. She said that our default a lot of times, was it Tabitha? I don't remember, but one of them was great. She said, you, you just say? automatically go to uh, uh, your post and you just post something just out of emotions. I'm mad about this. I'm posting. And then you subtweet about somebody. You screenshot what they say and you post it and then you block them so they can't read it. <laughs> let's quit being so petty and let's take it back to the Lord. God can handle it. Number six, I said it earlier when we were talking about guarding your heart. Mind what you are putting in your eyes and your ears today yeah, be because mindful. it will reflect in your heart tomorrow. We meet people. I prayed. Uh, we pray for people all the time in the lobby and somebody was like, I'm struggling uh, with night terrors and my kids are having all kinds of bad dreams. And I said, well, what, are you, what are you watching? And she was like, excuse me? And I said, well, what's your go-to movie? She's like, oh, I like action. I like adventure. I said, okay, cool. What else? She's like, Pfft. I'm really big into thrillers. I'm like, okay, like thriller. And she's like, no, no, no. She was like, I like horror movies. I said, Paul, what you put in your eyes and ears today will reflect in your heart tomorrow. Some of y'all are like, come on, Pastor Dan. No, it's absolutely true. If you are opening up the door and not guarding your gates and fear is always at the forefront, that there's things that produce anxiety. Y'all, in order for us to grow and guard our hearts, we have to guard our gates. Yeah. And we have to make sure what's coming in our eyes and our ears today are not constantly overflowing tomorrow. Ski One more time. Here we go. Number seven. Okay, and I'm also gonna I'm also gonna step on your toes a little bit in this one because some of you some of you might say, ah, Pastor Jackie, that's a little extreme. But I will also I will also encourage and remind you that what you listen to and watch can activate things within you that you're not in the season for. So for instance, we don't let our, our teenagers sit and listen to all of the songs that are out right now about relationships and loving people and disliking people and all of that, even just songs about relationships because they are not in that season to connect their heart to longing to be in a relationship. That's not the space they're supposed to be in. So if you are in a season where you are trying to overcome depression, you probably shouldn't sit down and listen to a sad country song. Like, you probably shouldn't do it. And if you're like, maybe this is a stretch. How many of you, how does it make the females in the room feel after watching a Hallmark movie? Well, we watched one last Warm night. Warm and fuzzy and ready for somebody to treat them so nice. And then guess what happens the very first moment that somebody doesn't treat us so nice right immediately afterwards. Oh, we are ticked off because you didn't treat me like that guy in the Hallmark movie treated the girl. And then we also talk about this. Wait um, a minute, because okay, he was moving on. Did you see that? Get to it. Because we can activate things within us by what we hear and by what we see. So be very, very careful that what you're listening to aligns with your belief system. Make sure that what you're watching aligns with what you are expecting in faith for God to produce in your life. It is important what you put in your eyes and your ears. And parents, 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 I don't care what the culture says. I don't care what their Come friends on. say. I don't care what their teachers say. It is your responsibility to determine what your children are supposed to be in the that midst of good. in their season. God has anointed you to be the overseer of their life. God has anointed you to see what's inside You're their spirit. God has anointed you to yes, recognize the struggle that lays in front of them, yes, maybe before they ever encounter it. So parents guard their gates before they ever get to it, because I promise you, they do not know how to do it. So when you release control and just let them be kids and let them be teenagers, you are releasing them to their lack of wisdom. You are releasing them to their lack of knowledge. You are releasing them to their immaturity. But God placed you as the one with wisdom and knowledge and maturity in their life. And if you feel you lack wisdom and maturity and knowledge for them, seek God for that wisdom. Let's go, girl. Seek God for that knowledge. Ask God for the understanding of what your child needs so that you don't trust somebody that doesn't know what they're talking Yee, about. That whole thing was or doesn't clippable. hear from God for your own child. I am so sorry. Somebody should shout amen. That was good. Ah. I love I love you all. No correction. 
just oh, there's some, passion. There's, there's some correction in that, and it's good. And it's also true because everything is spiritual, y'all. The Bible talks about the spirit realm is even more real than the natural realm. So a lot of times we tuck our kids in, and then we watch something we shouldn't watch. Not so we, no, 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 I'm others. talking about the people. Yeah. Not Hope City, we're talking about other people. I'm talking about the Baptist. Yeah. Amen. We don't mean that either. <laughs> Definitely get a DM for that. Um, something that we have, uh, we put some, some standards, some safeguards, some specific boundaries in place. Um, we, we go in and look up the, the review on every movie we watch. Uh, because uh, I, I've heard people say, well, there's not that many sex scenes. Well, there's only a couple uh, moments of full nudity, and we just kind of look away, kind of just look away. And then what ends up happening is we allow and open the door to the enemy, and, and, and we have to be really careful about this. And let me just encourage y'all, Christian relationships, those who are Christ-like, a little bit of porn is not okay. A little bit of that in our, it's just a little bit. If, if afterwards we had uh, brownies from everybody, for everybody, we don't. But if we did, if out in the lobby we were like, we have delicious brownies, it's, it's Pastor Jackie's grandma's recipe, it's incredible with a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream, amen. Oh, by the way, there is a little bit of manure in there, just a little bit. You can't even taste it because the brownies are so good. That's it's not my grandma's it recipe, so I promise. I promise. You're missing she loved it. loved me. I'll give you Never the hand of silence like you did were. me, which was worth it because you were preach preaching. But if I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's just a little bit of it, but you can't taste it because the chocolate is so good. Everybody would be like, I'm going to pass, except a couple of people. You're like, I'll probably still get it. But a little, a little bit in. The Bible talks about how it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. A little bit of that into your relationship to spice things up will open up the door to insecurity. Yep. It opens up the door to, to, to fear. It opens up the doors to, do I measure up? I can't ever be like her on that screen. I can't ever be like him. Y'all, we need to guard our gates. Elbow the person next to you and say, guard your gates. Let's move on. We got to move on. That was, guard those gates. Say, I'm going to guard those gates. I'm going to guard those gates. All right, number seven, serve and tithe in God's house. Y'all, if you want to be a God-first person, then you have to connect yourself to the house of the God. House. You have to commit yourself to God's house. That means you invest your time, you invest your finances into what God is doing in this city, around this world, but through this house, because this is where God has called you to and what God has connected you to. So in order to be yeah. a God-first person, you serve here, you tithe, here because you want to be a part of what God is doing. Because the reality is every one of us, every one of us, the stage set up, everything we do, the seats you're sitting in, it's because someone gave. Yeah. Someone showed up and served. The Bible says out of the, where your treasure is, that's your time, your talent, your giving, your heart is. If you call Hope City home and you're not still straddling the fence, wondering if this is your church, it's time to jump in, y'all. We've got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of territory to take. We got a lot of people to romance to Jesus. Right. You should clap better than that. We got a lot of people to see restored and receive their breakthrough and their deliverance. We're at 4,000, y'all. 4,079 commitments to Jesus just this year because somebody gave. All right, moving on, number eight. And we're a year-ish away from getting into our Come new on. building, y'all. There's gonna be so much to do to be able to move into that next blessing, and it is gonna take all of us, amen? It's gonna take, it's gonna all, take of us. all of us moving into this great new season of blessing. And the last one, I love this, number eight. Number eight. I love eight. eight because eight means new beginnings in the Bible. We need to create a running gratitude list. Yep. It's really difficult. And we don't mean on running. I mean like an ongoing gratitude list. Create an ongoing <laughs> gratitude list. The reality is it's very difficult to be both hyper-pessimistic and grateful at the same time. So true. Because when you focus on what God has done, yeah, there's these things that I'm frustrated with. There's these things that we're believing God to bring provision in. There's these areas that we need healing in and we need deliverance in and we need breakthrough in and we need restoration in. But God, you've been so good to me. God, you've showed up and you have moved. Don't let the enemy convince you that the things that are frustrating you right now, 
Don't let the enemy convince you to go back to the very things that God pulled you up out of and delivered you from. That's why gratitude, when you keep gratitude, God, I woke up again today. I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful today that it might, it might just be a little bit of gas, but I got gas in my car. Come on. I'm grateful that it might be a lean pocket, but at least I've got lunch. Come on. Like whatever it is, you can find something to be grateful for. You want to have a heart that stays vertical. You want to be good in relationships. Be a grateful person. Don't be the person that people are like, oh, here she comes. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> Avoid her today. I can tell she's frustrated today. Now, if you walk in, you're like, oh, no, literally, it's crazy. Everything feels like it's falling apart, but I'm grateful for what I do have. Come on, somebody shout, I'm grateful for what I do have. That's so good. So good. So if we do these things, if we make habits out of being a God first person, yep. if we choose to live a God first life, then you will develop a steadfast faith. And that steadfast faith keeps you steady. Just like in week number two, we heard from with Dr. Scott and Karen Hagan. Steadfast faith keeps you steady. And that steadiness with God will keep you steady in your relationships. Yep. It'll keep you steady as a friend. It'll keep you steady as a spouse. It'll keep you steady as a daughter or a son of God. And then you'll understand scriptures like Isaiah 54, verse yeah. 10. Yeah, you read, read it. That no, one? read it. You're, go. It says, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. When you understand this kind of love, when you understand the great and vast and fighting kind of love of God, then and only then will you understand that I am called to be steady because my God is steady. I am called so to be faithful because my God is faithful. I am called to be loyal because my God is loyal. I am called to be long-suffering at times because my God endures my difficulties. I'm called to be kind yeah. because his kindness has never departed from us. You know, kindness goes a long way, and kindness is contagious. Like, it's contagious. When you're kind to someone, they may not get it right off the bat, but it's a domino effect. Like, thank you for being so kind. That's why we love uh, noticing names. If there's a waitress, a barista, if there's a waiter, and we'll say, uh, what's your name, Brittany? Awesome, thanks. And I'll say, her, I'll say Brittany's name nine times during that meal because I want her to know, hey, we see you. Yeah. Not only do we see you, but God sees you. Kindness goes a long way. Look at the person next to you and just smile real big. You don't have to say anything. Just smile. And when we're talking, that's good. That's good. I love the smiles. When we're talking about being steady and steadfast, and even when I say long-suffering, I want you to know that there are, there are biblical exceptions. So I pray that, that those of you that are hearing me and know yeah. what I'm talking about, those that have um, walked through um, unsafe moments in relationships, yeah, sure. yeah. whether it is abuse or any of those things, please know that, that there, are, there are biblical exceptions and we're not asking you to continue to fight in an unsafe atmosphere. So if you're going through something difficult, would you just come up and ask our prayer team for prayer afterwards? Yeah. Would you seek wisdom, seek a counselor, make sure that you find somebody to walk you through that? Because when you do become steadfast in your faith, when you do choose Jesus first, you will find hope, hope. like the Lesko's talked about. And hope really does change everything. And hope puts us in a posture where we recognize that we have the safety of our Heavenly Father. The Bible says in Psalms 119, it'll be on the screen, 114, says, you are my, I love this, you are my hiding place yeah. and my shield. I hope in your word. You are my hiding place. Hope in the word of God. Hope in the presence of God. Hope in the peace of God. Because issues will arise yeah. when you make people your safe place. But when you hope in the Lord and you make him your hiding place, You'll never feel depleted. You'll never feel alone. You'll always feel like you have somebody that you can rely on and fall back on. Because again, God will never give you a life where he's, he's not necessary. Because the truth is, as my, as my best friend, he does make me feel safe. He does. It's true. He it's is. weird. <laughs> strong. He does make me feel safe. He does make me feel loved. But on the days where he's not his best self, guess what? I still feel safe because I'm safe because of my God. When, the, when, he doesn't, when he doesn't see my heart and when we butt heads as we do, 
when we have those moments, I don't doubt who I am because I know who I am it's in really God. Good. Yeah. And I don't turn and run from him because I want God to offer me the same kind of grace wow. when I offer it to him yeah. that I need from my God. And when we, when we become those God-focused people, those God-first people, when we become steadfast in our faith, when we hold on to that hope, we can finally find the purpose that our different relationships are supposed to carry in our lives. Because every different relationship that you have in life carries a different purpose. And you can't just assume that they all have the same purpose. They That's don't. Good. Unpack this. Well, we talked about this last night. This is where your counselor Jackie kicks in slash pastor, but unpack this a little bit more because there's relationships chosen yep. and some that aren't. There are relations, that's it. There are relationships that we chose, that we choose, that we choose every day. And there are relationships that we don't choose. But the truth is, hope changes everything and purpose unlocks assigned things. Purpose unlocks assigned things. Purpose allows you to see people for who they are instead of just the season that they are in, just the difficulty that they're walking really good. through. But you don't want to be involved, family, in the lives and the hearts of the people that God did not assign to your journey. Because in the marriage season, in that covenant relationship that you chose, in that season, that purpose is continual and it's developing and it's intended to stir and build your faith. But in the friendship relationships that you choose, again, the choices, that purpose will establish the longevity of those relationships. The purpose that's on those friendships will establish how long they are supposed to be in your life. But in your family relationships, the ones you didn't choose, the families that you were born into, the purpose often has more to do with developing you into a man or a woman of faith. It's really good. Over the journey. We talked about this last night. It reminds me of Proverbs 17, 17. It says a brother is born for adversity and family will teach us how to have faith in the challenging situations, those relationships. It'll, it'll, it'll teach us, it'll shape us and mold us. You said something a minute ago though, that I, I prayed that we didn't just breeze by. You said that we will see people where they are instead of the season that they're in. Have you ever, have you, have you seen or been a part of that before? Like God will show you who they are going to be, who they really are, not just the season they're in. Cause we're in the teenage season right now. And our literal ones are a little easier going right now. They have their challenges, but Fox is just happy to be here. Like he gets free food. He's five. But you have even taught me as a dad, see Brecken right now at 15, see who he is and who God has called him to be, not just the season he's, he's in. Because if we do that, it actually unlocks compassion. It does. It unlocks an awareness, a healthy awareness. But it's also very different when you're in dating seasons. Be very careful not to think that you see something that will hopefully one day be there. Have a different standard that expects. Now, before we enter into a covenant, you're going to need to be there. Yeah, I talked to need a, to get there. I talked to a gentleman who uh, we call this missionary dating, where uh, we're like, yeah, I think that she, I could see her being a believer one day, so I'm just going to hang out with her. And we've always seen that statistically end up actually going the opposite direction. A lot of times you get so infatuated, it actually draws you away from God instead of the two of you drawing closer to God. And so I just told him, I said, so, so unpack it. Tell me about this girl. And he's like, well, she's not really religious. She doesn't really believe in God. Uh, I don't even think that she believes in organized religion. I think that she thinks probably worship and everything's kind of a waste of time. I'm like, okay, what are you attracted to? He's like, well, she's kind of fine. I'm like, okay, so let's, just, let's just bring it back to center. Is she your Proverbs 31? Because here, be, be a friend. Uh, introduce her to Jesus, but don't get into a deep covenant relationship because it could lead you away from God instead of closer yeah. to God. The truth is family teaches us literally how to have faith in the challenging relationships. If you allow it, family teaches us how to 
trust God yep. in the midst of the difficult moments. And sometimes we think that we, we graduate when we move into our marital seasons. But the truth is, then you just get to choose the person that you are entering into a challenging relationship with at times. But you learn so much from your family about how to have faith in the midst of it. Family or lack of family. Yeah. Like great role models or completely MIA in the room but wasn't present or maybe you never even knew your dad. Maybe you never even knew your mom. Maybe somebody has ran out on you. Maybe you're like, man, everything that I am right now is because I had to fight. I had to fight my way to this place. And Pastor Dan, Pastor Jackie, like I've had to just bet on me. I haven't had a good model. We pray that throughout this series there have been deposits that help you recognize healthier patterns in a better way. So how do we have healthy relationships? The biggest thing that we want to leave you with here in this finality the of bow on it. the relationship series. How do we have healthy relationships? I'm going to tell you something so, so simple. Two words. We seek God. You seek God in all of your relationships. Number one, seek God on the person. That means if that person is already in your life, you pray over that person over and over and over and over again. Stop trying to fix people. Just surrender them to the Lord. Yeah. If this is a person that's not in your life yet and you would say, well, I listened to their testimony and they seemed messy before they got married and they're still together. It worked out for them. Seek the Lord on whether or not that person is somebody that you really should invest a lifetime into. A lifetime. Seek God on the person. Number two, we have to seek God for the faith to remain steady. Yeah. Every single day when we're praying, we're memorizing scripture, we're in his presence. God, make, give me my footing. I want to be steady. We went on a cruise a few years ago and the only, like everything in the dining hall seemed good, except the plates started sliding and sliding the other way. And when I stood up, they kept warning us like, Hey, Hey, Get your footing first because you got to figure out how to get your sea legs to remain steady. We have to seek God every day for the faith to remain steady. And lastly, seek God on the purpose. Every relationship that you are in, ask God, what's the purpose the on purpose this relationship? This. Yeah. What is the purpose of me being in this relationship? And if you're married, ask God with your spouse continually, God, what's our purpose for today? What is our purpose for this year? What do you have us on assignment for to accomplish? And then there's also a bigger picture purpose, what you're called to accomplish together. Seek God we seek God. How do we truly have healthy relationships? You seek God first. Yeah. Seek God first before you read the book. Seek God first before you talk to your parents. Seek God first before you ask somebody that you think has an idea. Seek the one that made you and knows what your strengths and your weaknesses are. So good. Seek God first. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today? Can y'all stand to your feet? Would you just lift your hands towards heaven, open handed like this, as we tie a bow on this? Jackie, I want you to just pray. I want you to pray over. You know, we have single folks. We've got widows and widowers. We've got folks that are married, married and complicated. In Jesus' name, married and full of breakthrough. Married again, hoping to be married again. Maybe those that have gone through some heavy, heavy seasons of relationships. Maybe it's a toxic work environment. Whatever the relationship is, would you just pray? over everyone at every campus. Would you just lift your hands towards heaven as we speak this prayer over you today? Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for every person that can hear my voice. I pray, Father, that you are providing wisdom right now, Lord. I thank you that you are at work in their lives, God. We truly, we truly surrender right now. If you are any one of those people that's going through something difficult, trusting God for something big, going through something small that matters to you, unsure of how to navigate a situation. Yeah. If that is you right there, right where you are, right where you hear me, would you just surrender that to God in your heart, maybe in your whisper, just say, God, I surrender it. And Father, what we surrender to you, we give you the opportunity to move in a miraculous way. And we ask you right now that you would move, move God, 
move on our behalf, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for peace to rest in hearts today, Father. Let them know that you are providing the resources, that you are working on us and you are working on the other person. You are providing grace. If, Father, there is someone that hears my voice that needs to exit from a dangerous situation that they are in, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would provide them with the resources and the tools to step away safely. I thank you, Father God, that you are teaching us to guard our hearts and our minds. God, we trust you. We trust you, Lord. I pray for great joy, Lord God. I pray that joy would spring up in relationships. I thank you for laughter to begin again, Lord. I thank you for friendship, God. I thank you for hope. I thank you that you teach us to seek you first. I thank you that you give us a steadfast faith. And I thank you, Lord God, that we can walk in hope, knowing your purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on. Amen, amen.